G'day Roosters, let's have a peeky boo at how you do reinforcing detailing of an on-site detention tank or an OSD tank. Now first of all, what is that type of tank? Well, it's a type of tank that holds in a temporary sense uh, stormwater in a flood or heavy rain event so that the main system in the local area is not overwhelmed. It holds it for a time and then lets it out in a controlled manner. So this is often a requirement in the area that I work in. And you can see here from this example, this 3D view, we've got a cutaway view here of a parking area. Now this is underground, but I've just cut down a little bit in the view there so you can see it. And underneath this parking deck here, you can see these three manholes for access, is a one to 1.2 meter deep OSD tank. So we're going to do the reinforcing detailing of how to build that. So that's the, the slab at the top, the walls and the base. So in the plan view, we have, I've got a footing plan here, which basically just shows the footings around. There's a great big slab of concrete. That's the base. That's 200 minim minimum thickness. And it has these walls around it too. And then in the plan view, you have, um, a suspended slab which is using bond deck which is a, a um, permanent formwork uh, shape piece of metal just google that there's different names for it in different places in the world but it's primarily spanning in the short direction there's also um, uh, thickness extra thicker slabs around so we get development through from the dowels through to the slab and then it transitions into a slab on ground so we'll go to our section, we'll start our detailing straight away. So that's what the section looks like straight out of Revit. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing is that I would put some sec cuts, um, break lines here at the side. So I've got a great little break line here that works from a line base two points, scale of one to 20. Just click the two points, it has a wipe out and does the breakout very nicely like that. So that's that done in both sides. Now this vertical uh, piece of concrete here, because it's on grade, that's unlikely to be like that. So one trick you could do is go into the filled region and put a filled region that's solid that will mask that. So if I just draw a sort of a shape like that, I'll make those lines invisible invisible lines, those medium weight lines, which is the same thickness as the cut on that floor. And then I'll change the filled region to solid white. So it becomes like a masking region and it'll give the illusion that there is that situation. That's more realistically how the concrete will form as the grade falls away there. Now, another thing we can do while we're at filled region is this is in ground. So we can show that it's sitting in the ground with some earth hatch. I'll just do basic earth hatch in this detail. There might be a bit of grade and other things in there. So first of all, I do a thin, thin hidden line which represents any waterproofing membrane or plastic sheeting that's laid down. I'll offset that by 15 millimeters. Seems to work best at one to 20 scale. So you've got good white space. So notice there are ticked copy off, so it doesn't copy the line, just moves it out. Uh, that one's done already because it's, whoop, just copy that one down. Now we've got to trim it up. So this little thing here, split element, I'll just split that and then I'll use this one here, trim or TR command, and then just select the two lines that you want to trim up. This one here, extend or trim, you can grab that one and click on the break line and then click the line like that and we'll clean up the end of that line. Now let's keep trimming with this trim command here or fillet command. You could also call it, what actually do they call it here? Okay, so it's trim or extend to corner. So fillet's probably more an AutoCAD terminology, but it still is a fillet technically. So that's that line done. Now we want to offset. This offset command's very handy. Say we go 250, I'll just see how that looks first. Now I want to copy in this situation because I want to keep the original line. That looks pretty good. So I'll copy those lines out. 
Now trim those up again with that trim command. Trim, trim, trim. Now what I'll do is I'll just grab, grab, select the line. You've got the little end point there. You can grab it like a, like a grip. And then we'll draw another line up to there to close it off. So you can see what we're doing here. We're creating a sort of a boundary for the hatch, for the filled region. Now select those hidden lines that are down the bottom there and change those to invisible lines. Visible lines. And finish on the line creating. And then I'll just change, instead of solid white, I've got one pre-built in called uh, Earth. That search, search there is really handy if you've got a lot of preset hatches already. And I'll go Earth Grey. So it's grey lines, it's not black lines. Now how did I get that hatch into Revit? Well, I imported it from, I took a look at the type properties there and edit that. Basically that hatch there, I've imported it from AutoCAD hatch. So the PAT files from AutoCAD, you can bring them in to Revit and then they're there in Revit. Uh, and then you can copy them to other projects, etc. So that that's the hatch done. So now let's work up the reinforcing. Um, where's a bit good place to start? Probably at the base. Uh, now I'm just going to I'm going to draw it manually this one because I'm not sure if my preset. You could create this as a family, a drop in, and I haven't done that for thin slabs yet and it probably won't work properly but I'll just show you manually so with the line tool uh, so go to I've got one preset lines which is not as it's in between thin lines and the medium lines so it's my 0.35 you could say is probably the line weight on that now just draw in a line like that u-shaped and then draw another one in like that so you basically got the basic shape in, and then what I do is I just, I just uh, trim, clean it up a bit. I get the basic line work in, and then clean it up. That seems to be the quickest way to do it. Thirty-five is not realistic cover; it's probably more like uh, fifty-five. But I'll just leave it at forty there, because it's, it's a little bit diagrammatic anyway. Um, the main thing is they got the bars going in the main direction and the shape of the bars. So that one, and once again, make that 40. Bring that one over here and make that one 40 as well. Now, space between the bars, 15 is good. 15 is good for white space. Don't, I would suggest don't go less than that. 10, you can add a pinch, get it a one to 20, but 15 is better. It just looks better, the drawing especially when you do um, print reduction. So if the, the, this drawing's on an A1 sheet, so if you printed it half scale at A3, it's one to 40. Um, it, it works for B1 sheets too, which is very common for larger projects. AO, forget AO, it's just, it's just too big and yieldy. B1 should be the maximum sheet that you work to. So what I've done there is I've just gone into the fillet, the line command, and there's this fillet arc, and I've set the radius to 25. 25 is a good rule of thumb for bends on bars, reinforcing bars. Bars are not bent at hard angles. They're bent in a radius or they have a structural issue. So now I'm going to the annotate command and I have a thing here called repeating detailing component. That's a great and powerful tool. I've got a lot of stuff preset in here. Um, now I'll we'll use the N12s at 200 maximum centers and I'll just drop it in first. I'll just throw, throw two in and then I'll manipulate it. So that's in. So you can see what it's done there. I've got a family that's a basically a solid cross section of a bar and it's an N12 bar, so a diameter 12 bar roughly. And then I'll just pull it and stretch it around. It does all the hard work for you for arraying and setting it out. So none of those bars are greater than 200 long uh, centers which is great. So that's going to look correct. Of course, the text note is the key thing in this whole situation. Now we'll have another bar coming down here. So we'll, I'll just pull the, I will just pull this over a bit because I know I'll have to adjust that anyway soon. 
for the wall reinforcing. Um, now that's okay. I'm just thinking about the wall reinforcing. I think the engineer that I'm working with here exactly would like the reinforcing on the inside face. I'm not sure if they, yes, they it would work like that in the load combination when the slabs put on the top. So we'll, we'll stick with that. Um, once again, just put a line in, use the line one I've preset. Uh, let's put 55 there. Oh, it's probably more like 50 because this is actually um, what we call dinsel wall, which is a proprietary product in Australia. The um, There's similar products all around the world. They're, they're basically plastic pre plastic forms that stay permanent there and you fill them with concrete and reinforcing. They look absolutely ugly, but they're very popular because of affordability and speed and structurally they're fine. So um, let's get that bar going there. We've got that one going. Now we need a starter bar down the bottom. This one will only stop here. Then we'll have a starter bar. So we'll go to the modify command offset and once again 15 mil gap. Use the copy on and we'll draw a line down here now we want the bars I want the starter bars to be under those bars so diagrammatically I'm going to show it under there now DL type it in gets you quickly to the L align command go to the fillet arc once again radius 25 and then fill it that up that um, I'll make that 275 so it's a 300 cog probably 200 cog will work there but I'll just show it like that anyway uh, now this because of the reinforcing schedule, they'll pick up that finer detail later to the um, local standard. Now, how, how do I do laps? I don't particularly... Someone might be able to tell me a better way to do this, but what I do is I draw a construction line and then I offset that by the lap. So let's just go 500. It's probably more... What did I say? What's the vertical? I'm going to put 16 bars in there. N16, so it's probably a 500 lap. I haven't bothered looking it up. It might be 400, but that'll do diagrammatically. It's not too long, not too short, so just right. Now, the um, this bar is going to lap with something which will be mesh. So we're going to have a construction joint here between the slab on ground and the suspended one with some dowels. So they can build this slab and then they can pour that slab on ground there. So let's go to thin lines to represent that construction line. So that's where that construction line is, there and there. Might put a bit of text here actually. So just I'm, I'm hitting the text command, and I've got a preset text at 2.5 millimeters. 2.5 millimeter text is the text go to text for anything A1 or above. Just use that. Don't go smaller because you won't be able to see it when you do a print reduction on an A3 printer, which most people do. Also, even just turn the PDF, it just makes it easier on the screen when you've got an A3 size um, screen, which a lot of people have. I've got two of them, for example, next to each other. So they are construction joints there. Now we'll have um, some mesh that will, reinforcing mesh that will be on the top. Once again, just throw it down anywhere, adjust it later. I just find that easier. I'm going to change that line to thin hidden line, one I've pre-created. So it's a thin line. You can see that that one's almost half the thickness of that one. Uh, so let's put some cover on this one, 40. Now the, the mesh will be at the top here. It'll probably only have 30 cover uh, because it's about shrinkage control. So let's put 35 because 40 diagrammatically with line thicknesses might be just too hard to tell the story. So there's our top mesh in that situation there. Uh, I'm just thinking we've got the bond, the bond deck preform that's going to come and bear 50 millimeters on this wall here. So that bar there is actually going to get in the way line work styles. You won't be able to see it very well. So I'm just going to move, I selected all of those objects and I'm going to move it over 15, whoa, 15 millimeters. That'll be more, come apparent later. I'll mirror, I'll mirror, I'll flip this over to there later on to, to draw that. In fact, I might as well put it in now, but if I draw a line and it, if I hover, it gets that little triangle, it means midpoint. And um, 
that's going to be my center line. So I'll just change that to something. I know it's temporary. I've got, I love using pink lines because nobody ever uses it for construction and they stand out. You know that I put those there because no one else does. Who uses pink? Anyway, good. Use it, I reckon. It's a good color. Um, offset that line 15, and now we go to the DL command again to detailing line, fill it arc 25, and click those two lines. And what we'll do need to select now is those top two and change those two lines, which is the name I have got for 0.35 pen. So the thin lines is 0.25. The lines is 0 0.35, 0 0.3, and the medium lines are 0 0.5 to 0 0.45 around that. So it's sort of following traditional drafting technique. Um, so, so I've shown a 300 cog there again. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a 25 radius, and then I've just clicked on the line and put 275. So the overall thing is 300. So that's a diagram representation of that. So one bar L. Now, try not to double cog it. I have done it here, double cog. But because it's a fixed width, they might actually have an L, um, start a lap bar at the end. So one end is cogged and one end is free. And then there's another bar laps with it. But I haven't bothered with that detail on this slab on ground. Now we've got that there. That's going to flip over there. We've got to do... This is a dinsel wall. So we'll have... I want to show the holes in it so you can be a bit clearer, clearer to understand what you're looking at here. I'll leave the hatch on there, but I've got the repeating detail. I'm just going to throw in what was there already, which was the N12 at 200. But if I go over to my repeating detail, I've preset one already called Dinsel Wall in Section Elevation View. So Section Elevation View, well, it's just Section. But anyway, it means the same thing. So you've got these circles that come up and that represents the dinsel. That's what it looks like in cross section. So you can imagine the rest of it's like a plastic ribbing that's holding it all together. Plastic on the outside and plastic ribbing and that clips together. The other thing we'll need to do is um, the vertical reinforcing. Now, from memory, I think that it's an odd number, but the centers, the way the proprietary system works, each one's different here. I'm going to show N16s at 300 fixed because those circles are fixed. So I have one preset called N16 300 fixed. So that, what that means is, um, whoa, I just lost my properties. Where did that go? You know, the problem here in Revit is you, you'd forget where you, you See, you, you lose something and you don't turn it off and on often. So you um, you can lose where it is and you forget. Now, where? how do I get that thing back? So that's properties. That's there. View properties. There's properties. Okay, got properties. And now I just need the project browser. You know what's interesting? I've never noticed this feature. They might be new to 2021. But I've just snapped those two things together. I've never used to work like that. Now, I normally have them separated. I've never seen that happen before. That's probably pretty cool. I think I like that, that we've got that functionality. It's probably been there for ages, and I've never noticed it. But anyway, you have accidents, and you discover new things. So that's great. So where were we? We were doing the reinforcing. So we've got that. So we've got the repeating detail back to that. Repeating detail, and this time I'm going to use N16 300. So that means it's always at 300 centers. It's not got the two ends and then dividing it by to be maximum 300. So it's a slight difference there. And if you looked at, if you look in the types there, it's got uh, fixed distance, and the other one you do is fixed number, maximum spacing. Maximum spacing is the one you probably use the most. I don't think I've ever used fill available space, but it's probably got a good use. So whoop, once again, just draw it randomly. I find that just easier. Just drop it in anywhere and then man manipulate it to get it to where you want. So that's good. So that's diagrammatically shown there. That's great. Now we have the bond deck rib. We're in the long section of it. Now I'll just show you what the bond deck does look like. It's a permanent 
one millimeter thick base metal thickness. You can get it in variety of thicknesses, but I'm using the uh, one millimeter thick. If I go to repeating co component, I think I have got one in there. Yeah, okay, I do have bond deck in there. So this is what it looks like in cross section. And so it's a rib that gives it stiffness to the slab. Now we're drawing it longitudinally, so we won't see this level of detail. We'll see it in elevation. So how high is it? About 53, I always think it's 51. Let's draw it at 52. Um, so I'm going to do a region to represent that, filled region. And it will be thin lines primarily, so I'll start with that. It needs 50 millimeters minimum bearing on the wall it sits on. So it's 52 high. And then I'm going to fire it across to my center line, straight down, and then straight across. Now these two lines here, I'll just keep them as the same thickness as the lines that are underneath, medium lines. This one, this one, and this one are thin lines, which are correct. And I will make that solid white. So why do I keep doing that? I just keep closing it. Doing that today. You go months without ever touching that, but I've closed it twice today already. So I've changed that to solid white. Doesn't really need to be solid white, but I've done it in the filled region. You could do that with line work too. So that represents the bond deck. Now, because it spans quite wide, it's six metre, we're going to have some extra reinforcing here. In fact, I don't think that'll even be mesh. I reckon there'll be extra bars at the top. Um, and I will put that in. So let's draw the... I'm going to put some bottom reinforcing in it between the ribs. So that will represent that. Um, move those lines to the middle of that. And this situation, I do, I do, it's a little bit less forgiving because it's suspended. That's on ground. So you can lap it all over the place and it'll probably still work. So let's make sure we get the laps in the right place. So I don't want to have double cogged bars here because that could lead to a, an error. So I'm going to offset or length too long or too short would be the worst. And then they try to just fudge it because I've already got the um, bars on site. So let's put uh, a, a bar here that's lapped and a starter bar, basically. Uh, 25 millimeter radius, that's good. Now just make sure all of that's on lines. Lines, yep. And get the, get the lap going. Good lap here. So uh, 475, 500 lap. So that's the bar there. And the other end, it's just going to be a L bar. So I'll just mirror that over now. And then DL, fill it. You're repeating things over and over. That's what all detailing's about. It's just finding little patterns that you repeat over and over again. And those good patterns become good habits, which lead to good um, quality drafting. We haven't missed too many things. So I'm going to mirror that bond deck profile there too. Mirror that over. You can see, just do a sensibility check there. That 50 minimum is important and that's bearing well. There's enough gap between the line there too. So we're going to grab these wall reinforcing, that uh, dinsel representation of the circles and the starter bar down the bottom here. I'm going to use the mirror commands here and select my pink line, dashed line, which is the, the hidden line. So that's most of the reinforcing done for the actual tank, but we need the dowels between the slab on ground and the suspended slab. So th this will be formed first, the concrete poured, and then we'll have some bars that are sticking out here that will be done when the concrete for the slab on ground's done. So what that means is that we can get this slab poured, the walls poured, and then the slab fully cured and come to full strength before we backfill the wall. So that will give the those walls the structural optimal um, situation there. They're not cantilevered walls having to take uh, load from the the um, backfill. So we'll put in um, 600 dows and, and it's a trafficable area. There's cars on this. So we'll do 600 dows and I'll use the wide lines. I like to make the dows wide just makes it clearer, cleaner to see. 
So that's a 600 day on that, that that wide lines would be 0.7 pen or 0.6 pen something like that so there we go that represents the Dow now I've done the detailing there I probably don't need that anymore I don't think I'll just leave it there for a minute because I'll just I'll put the slab mesh here and we'll have some extra mesh here we do it thicker here for a zone because often there's a bit of soft spot here. So this slab be sort of becomes not slab on ground, it's slightly suspended. So put the two layers of reinforcing so that you can span over any soft spots that might develop from subsidence or settlement. Um, yeah, so that's it. So let's copy that over to the other side and pull them up like that so that's the mesh on that side now there's a you could just trim that line up there another trick you could do is grab that break line because it's got a masking region and say bring to front and it'll just mask that if you do the do not crop view you can see what extends out of that I probably should have saved there when that message came up so you can see there's the not far away there's a footing and a wall so I have pulled this people might be thinking oh line of influence here now 45 degrees it is coming down on the the, the base of the wall so I, d I did think about that we've got one meter gap there so it is probably rock in this and that depth as well so it should be all right um, and it's not it's not very deep it's only one meter to 1.3 meters max now the next step would be oh there we go so we've got to fix that so just change that line to invisible visible and there'll be one on the other side probably should have done that as one filled region instead of mirrored it mirrored it mirrored it mirrored it invisible so that looks good and clean and not a dog's breakfast now we'll do some dimensions so it's dimension up all the slab thicknesses so we've got a 250 there 220 there got a 250 there got 250 there so the you know, development what's going on there grab that one 250 okay you've got the dimension for the base which would just be 200 some people do those thicker because of development in the wall starter bar and I understand that it's harder to get the development in the starter bar but 200 will be right this in this situation okay that's all the dimensions I probably need oh no I do I do want to limit how high it is that is probably how deep it really is but there's some falls in this tank that's on the hydraulic drawings so I will limit it to 1.2 meters maximum that's the structural engineering maximum height you can go to mostly over the wall reinforcing now let's detail the biscuits out of this so we'll start up here and I'll just chuck in notes chuck in notes everywhere so let's just do the top re you know what I need I'm just thinking we need I'm going to put definitely going to put top reinforcing extra bars as well as the mesh in there. It's a six meter span. Let's um, throw throw offset fifteen millimeters there. Offset fifteen millimeters there. Cog the ends, and we won't have that bar on this one. We have it on the other side. So let's DL fill it that up. Switch to lines. Lines pretty confident without even checking the numbers that we'll need some extra bars there mesh SL 92 mesh 9 mil bars won't be enough to curry that span I know the bond deck can take a lot but it's it's cars here driving on it robustness got to think about robustness too um, don't even want anything weird happening that's going to freak out the, the clients in a few years so that's that bar there now the other ends will have another bar so I'll just move that starter bar down 15 mils. So you've got white space and it represents... In reality, those bars are in the same plane, but you can't show that in a section diagrammatically. So we do it like that. Now I'm going to go offset 15 and 15. I need to move that down again 15. So there'll be a starter bar basically or an L bar at the end here. DL radius 15 radius 25 sorry and we'll go um, 4 
So once you, you grab that and you start pulling it and then you just grab the dimension up here and type in how long you want it, so it's a 500 lap. So that's that's got the bars at either end, so there's less conge congestion. So there's a couple of bars there, and there's a couple of bars at the bottom. So that's why I'm doing it like that. Um, yeah, that'll do like that. So let's let's um, label everything up now. So we've got, I think I'll do the the top reinforcing and bottom reinforcing and bond deck separate. So let's go SL92 mesh top. Uh, now, it is underground, so technically it's probably not got any waterproofing exposure. I will put 30 millimeters cover. Hopefully that's all right. That's normally an override from the standard notes. And then plus N16 at 300 extra. So that's extra in addition to the SL92. And remind me too, I'm going to forget, but I've got to put the um, re-entrant bars on the plan too for where the hatches are. You can't really see that on a, cro on a cross section. Now we've got the Bondec slab. So we'll call up the Bondec or the Bondec form. So it's 1.1 millimeter BMT, base metal thickness Bondec. That's how Bondec call it. Bondec's a product that's made a proprietary product. I probably, I often do this with proprietary products, put it, it in quotes because some of the proprietary names are sort of like normal names if you put it in quotes it goes oh yeah, then it's proprietary now i got to look that up so one so one millimeter but bmt base metal thickness bond tech, um we need temporary propping as required and we'll put plus uh n16 at 200 bottom bottom which is the bar that you see in the middle there so that that covers that let's just copy that note down notice how I've always got the notes aligned straight up like that if that's good elements of style and drafting just try to stick to that any discipline it's good drafting don't just do a scatter scatter gun approach to it. it just looks like it's just disgusting don't let's make our drawings look good so n12 is at 200 so this is basically just minimum reinforcing because it's on ground. So N12 at 200, top and bottom, and both ways. So that covers all the reinforcing down the bottom there. That's great. So that wall's done, that wall's done, that wall's done, that bit's done. The dowels, copy a note over here, that can be the start of the dowels. Um, that top, that mesh there, that's covered in the standard slab on ground details and the 120 slab. There's a whole sheet of special details of that. So we don't have to show the extra stuff here. So what I'll do is I'll go slab on ground. Refer to, I'll just, get, I'll just call it slab on ground. I'll just, I'll just give it a label so you know what it is. That'll do. Now that's going to be there and I've got to call up the dowel over there. So I'll copy that note up and arrow that in there. Now how will we call up these dowels? Well there'll be R, R20s, round bars. Um, they don't have to be round bars. We have called up R20s already on this job so let's just stick with it. So they'll be R20s at 300 centres and 600 long. They will be galvanized. Galvanized. That's important because there's a construction joint there is possible for water egress. So they'll give them a longer life. Galvanized dowels. And we'll say typical. Typical all round. That'll cover the other side and everywhere. So that, that's a good cover all note. So that gives the development from that slab to that slab. R20, thicker one because of the loading, obviously, vehicle loading. And it's only in the middle where there's plenty of no congestion in the middle. So it's easy to put the dowels in the center of the slab. I could actually, it might be wise even just to put a little dimension here. So use the dimension aligned, select the objects that you want and you will see this little EQ sign. If you tick it on, it'll give you that. EQ, equal, equal. 
that's probably pretty good. Um, I'll just type in here waterproof membrane by others. That's a specialist thing, but can be structurally important too. So we do draw it, note that it's there, but it is a specialist person that's telling you what the spec is for that. This wall, now the detailing of that wall, we've got the um, 200, so it's a 200 thick dinsel wall. We have N16 at 300 vertical and N16 at 333 horizontal. Apparently that's a thing. I'd love, I'm going to really check this one day, but I'm sticking with that. Everyone reckons that's it. That's how it ends up in reality on site. Um, and of course, all the cores are grout filled with concrete. So that's the wall done there. And once again, I could just say typical all round. That covers everything. So we've done the walls. Don't worry about dimensioning that lap length. That's a standard. Uh, the sub base, probably worth putting a note there. Um, I'll probably on this one, copy this one down. So you can see we've got a line of notes, a line of notes. Keeping the leaders at a consistent angle too does make the drawing look nicer. Not often can you do it, but not always can you do it. But if they're at 45 degrees or 30 or whatever, they're just consistent. It's not as easy to do it in Revit because you don't have that level of control you just sort of eyeball it in so I'll put a note down here about the sub base um, so this is going to be by a specialist personal too so I'll just say approved sub base to geotech engineer requirements and that'll cover that but it'll be Minimum 100 kPa bearing capacity, but I personally think in this zone it's going to be more like 500 to 1000 kPa rock, so they'll have no problems there. So that covers everything. Let's just have a look over. You know what? The only one thing we've forgotten is this piece of reinforcing here is probably not covered anywhere else in a typical detail, the bottom here. So we'll have to, I'll just put a note on that because I. That won't be picked up. So that's going to be SL92 mesh bottom. And I'll put the word extra because it's probably not covered anywhere else. So it's extra to the normal st standard slab on ground reinforcing. Uh, I, hate, I hate that. That looks disgusting. Um, that ar arrow needs to be really over there. Getting a fair way away from the object here. Let's see if I can just pretty it up a bit somehow. Hmm. It's not particularly great. Get that angle in. That equal equal, pull that up. Let's get that slab on ground over here. Elements of style are really important. Don't just throw it around. We've got to make our drawings look good. If they look good, people will be more comfortable with them. We don't want them frustrated because they look disgusting as well. Okay, that, oh dear. I'm troubles here. I don't particularly like the style there, but it's not not completely disgusting. That'll do. It's not hanging too far over the back there, so that's pretty good. Um, I will put a no dimension here too, and that dimension will say 50 cover, which will give us uh, the optimal in the tension and compression on that bar in the final state. Um... That's it. I'm just looking over the detail. You know what's good to do too is to label things, just sensibility. And one way you can do it is in a box when you've got an overall situation. If I put just OS, O dot S dot D, so on-site detention tank, and that's 2.5 millimeter text. If I show you in properties here, I've got one called 2.5 millimeter box. Click that. OSD tank. So that labels all of that. That labels that. I don't think I've messed, missed anything on there. That looks like it is a done. So that's how you do reinforcing detailing in Revit for an on-site detention tank 
on a section.